All right, and we're back with another tip of the day. So today we're looking at the Slack integration under the notification rules. So Slack, we are looking at specifically because it does have uh, more customization options available than some of the other integrations we offer. So uh, if you're used to using the notification rules, this menu should be familiar. Uh, the typical way to create these rules through the dropdown that we have, uh, you can see here that one of our newer features, Adaptive Alerts, is also enabled uh, for my account here. And then we have a list of those rules. If you have recently created an integration, you may have a bunch of these default rules in place. Uh, and one recommendation to make there is uh, apply some filtering to those default notification rules if they're too noisy. Something like new item sending a message every single time may benefit from having some additional filtering in place. You may want to select only items from a given file or use the other components that are available. All of the different fields shown here will help you to hone in on those different groups of items. And the path field, for those that may not be aware, this allows you to select any of the data fields available in your occurrence for use in that. You can see here I've used some of those more custom fields and uh, made filtering references to those. All right, so what do these rules actually look like? What do the notifications look like? This is my demo channel set up specifically for this purpose. And we can see here, we have a couple of deploy notifications at the top looking just at today. Uh, and then below that, we've got a number here based on items. We've got a few for new items. And then there's also some in here that uh, look a little different from the others. Donation failed. We'll have to look into that a little more closely. Uh, and then a few other examples here. High occurrence rate. We can see five occurrences in one minute. And we also see that there was a new version detected in the production environment. So most of these are default notifications. They come through with the same formatting that we provide out of the box. I can click on those in Slack to go back to the offending item. And we can see, of course, that we have the other uh, Slack actions that are available for all of these. The resolve and mute button quickly change the status there. You can also modify the level, or you can just quickly assign it to any of the users that are assigned to this project. And so then we'll, we'll look at these custom ones here. We see donation failed amount 100. And then this one here's got a different amount. So this is a pretty specialized case here where I'm taking the occurrence level notification. So this is every single occurrence. This could be every event has the possibility to be very noisy. But what I'm doing in this case is I'm actually changing the format of the message template. Here I'm overriding what we would typically do in applying my own message here. And that's where I'm calling out donation failed. And we can see here the amount is also added there. That's where we saw amount 25 or 100. So just to make it perfectly clear, that amount was not added until the method was called here. So for the $25 button, we have this one here, and it adds this as a part of the roll bar configuration. Here we see for the other one, it's adding that with a field of 100. And so by adding this to my occurrence payload, I can then refer to that as a part of what I'm doing in this message template, so body.amount. And here we see this is only going to fire. One of the ways I reduce the noise there is only send this notification when the body.team field equals donations. So that was something I set as a part of my initial config. This was donations. I had changed it to disabled to reduce the noise there. So uh, hopefully these tips will help you understand how to better utilize the Slack notifications, how you can make those deliver a better alerting experience for you and your team.